Today's NICU nugget is on choroid plexus cysts. The choroid plexus is a spongy area made up of cells and blood vessels which is just lateral to the ventricles in the brain. The ventricles are the fluid-filled sacs in the brain that help with cushioning of all the brain contents. The fluid inside the ventricles is called cerebrospinal fluid that we shorten to CSF. The choroid plexus produces the CSF. So you can remember this by thinking choroid plexus CP CSF producer. Loads of different cells in the body produce fluids. If there's any sort of obstruction to the drainage of that fluid, then you could end up with a cyst. So you could end up with a kidney cyst, you could end up with a mucus cyst if the salivary glands get obstructed, or you could end up with a sebaceous cyst if the sweat glands, for example, get obstructed. About 1-2% to of all babies will be diagnosed with having a choroid plexus cyst. So again, accumulation of the CSF right in the choroid plexus area. The vast majority of these are diagnosed in the second trimester, or if the baby's already been born prematurely, then on their first ultrasound. Most of these choroid plexus cysts will just regress by themselves by about 34 weeks, and are really nothing to worry about at all. In three scenarios, we have to worry about choroid plexus cysts. The first one is when the choroid plexus cyst is really, really large. This is unbelievably rare. I mean, you could write a case report about it if you have such a huge choroid plexus cyst. But in those cases, it could interfere with the surrounding anatomy and maybe even block the CSF drainage and end up with hydrocephalus. So in those babies or adults, they may end up needing surgical intervention for that. The second and third reasons are concerning for the same reason. In the second scenario, we're worried if there's more than one choroid plexus cyst, so two or multiple. And in the third scenario, we're worried if the choroid plexus cysts are associated with other anomalies in the body, whether it's cardiac anomalies or clenched fists or rocker bottom feet. And the reason that we're worried about multiple choroid plexus cysts or choroid plexus cysts with other anomalies is that it could be associated with chromosomal issues, specifically trisomy 18, but also other genetic problems. So if the mother is still pregnant and either of those scenarios are identified, then some sort of genetic testing should be done. Same thing if the baby's already been born, we should probably consider sending chromosomes or a microarray. I hope you learned something today. If you have any questions or comments, then please write below. Otherwise, remember to subscribe. Thank you.